Hey everyone, this is a video where I will give an overview of the 4x4 method I started working on a few years ago. I haven't really been developing it much in the last year or so, and I just want to put out all the information that I have on it and allow anyone in the community to continue working on it if they so desire. One note I want to add is that none of the ALG sets that I created for this method are entirely complete. They are complete enough to be able to solve with this method as it was my main method for a, a few years and still is, I just don't solve much anymore, but they're not 100% complete. I won't have any ALGs provided in this specific video, but if you check in the description below, there will be links to other videos dedicated to the specific steps of the method, and those will include the ALG sets uh, in their description. So if you're curious for the actual ALGs that I use, uh, check those other videos. I'm going to give a little bit of background information on the method itself here. If you're not interested in any of that, check the description below and there will be timestamps to the actual discussion on how the method works. The method itself is called 2-step and it's a 2x2 two two reduction method. 2-step stands for 2x2 two two corner edge pairing method. I first started working on 2-step after challenging myself to solve my 4x4 four by, four by reducing it to a 2x2 two two for fun. I really enjoyed it, so I looked up what information there was about similar methods and found out there were really only a few po people talking about it online, and they all were saying something along the lines of it being something that you could do and it was fun to do, but it wasn't a legitimate speed solving method. I didn't really think that it had really been given the proper amount of research and development into it, so I took it upon myself to work on it. Currently the method is in an incomplete state, but I have done enough work so that it is possible to solve completely with this method, uh, and in fact, as I said before, it was, or it is currently my main 4x4 method, though I don't really do much solving anymore. Uh, my personal best time with this method is uh, 1 minute and 7 seconds, which is pretty good for a cuber of my level. I don't intend to continue working on developing this method any further, but I would be interested to see if anyone in the community decides to dedicate any time to working on furthering the development. So if you do, please let me know in the comments below. Alright, so with all that out of the way, let's talk about the method itself. The method has four main steps. Uh, first six corners, last two corners, centers, and two by two. Now I have received some response to this method stating that it would be easier and faster to solve the 2x2 two two stage with just the corners solved before actually solving the centers because it would make it easier to know where each center piece would go because you would know, you know, if you had a, if this were the green face, you know the blue face is back here. So if you have a blue center here, you know it goes back here instead of having to find a blue co corner that it has to go to. And that may be true. I don't personally think so, but it may be, but that's not how 2-step goes. The reason I started working on 2-step was because of how satisfying it was to finish a 4x4 four four solve with the 2x2 two two stage. So that is just how I designed 2-step and it's not going to change. I'll go into a little bit of detail and background in each of these steps here, but for the first three steps I'll be making individual videos to provide much more detailed information. There is also a beginner's version, which I do have a tutorial for posted on my channel already, which only requires you to use a standard T-perm and a wide T-perm to solve. A wide T-perm being the exact same as a T-perm, just using wide R moves instead of regular R moves. But for this video, I will just be talking about the full method, not the beginner's version. So the first step is to solve the first six corners. And what I mean by that is you pair up the three edge pieces with their correct corner, and then that corner is considered solved. So you do that for any six corners, and this step is complete. It's as simple as that. And you can accomplish this step in, in any way, really, but I have a few sub-steps that I'll provide here that will help out with that. As you solve more corners, the number of moves that you can use without scrambling one of the previously solved corners becomes more and more restricted. This is one of the reasons people consider the 2x2 two two reduction methods to be so inefficient. However, I've created an ALG set called Edge Corner Edge Edge, or ECEE, -E, to make this much simpler. I'll have a separate video down in the description that will go into more detail on ECEE -E itself. But the basic concept of the ALG set is you pair up one edge with its corner and put that corner in the top front left position with the solved edge underneath the corner. And from here you position the remaining two 
edges in the back two two by two by two sections so in in this section and in this section they just need to be in these sections somewhere here and then once you have them positioned there you just use an alg depending on which case you have uh, there are 30 cases in total uh, again i'll go into more detail on that in the specific ecee video check the description for a link to that uh, and, and there are a few special cases you can run into with this step, which I will also cover in that ECEE video. ECEE algs are designed to solve two edges with their specific corner and preserve most of the rest of the relationship of the edge pieces with their corners. So some of the algs seem like they are longer than they need to be, but they are that way for a reason. And it's because of that that I don't really recommend using ECE algs for the first two or three corners while solving. During the first two corners, the moves that you can actually use are hardly restricted at all, so it can be easier to solve these just intuitively before moving on to using ECEE for the last three or four corners as your available moves get more and more restricted. The process that I actually recommend is to memorize the moves to solve the first two corners, much like memorizing the cross in CFOP, and then use ECEE for the last four corners. There was also an idea that I was playing with where you would use a completely separate ELG set to solve the first three corners, which I creatively called the F3C ELG set, but I don't really think that that is any more efficient, so I don't really recommend using it. So after the first six corners, we moved on to the last two corners. This step is where the move set you have available is the most restricted. So I created this whole elk set with the idea of being able to solve every case that you could come up with using just one algorithm. I never actually got around to finishing the elk set, but I came far enough that you can solve a very good number of the cases with just one elk, and the rest of the cases could be solved with two algs using one setup alg to set up one of the cases that I do have an algorithm for. Uh, I'll have another separate video talking more in depth about the L2C alg set and the method behind it in the description below again. So if you're looking for more information there, uh, be sure to check that out. Now with all of the corners solved, you then moved on to the centers. Solving centers was probably the step where I did the least amount of research, at least if you don't count the two by two stage because that's just solving a two by two. Uh, I feel like there's still a lot of improvements here that could greatly improve efficiency. I just haven't never gotten around to working on them. I typically only use a commentator and a couple of algs for solving centers, uh, but again, you can complete this step however you see fit. I will have another separate video linked again in the description below that will go over the algs that I use for solving centers if you want to check that out. Finally, you've now completed the 2x2 two two reduction and you are now on to the 2x2 two two stage. There isn't much to say here, just solve the 2x2. Two two. I never really got around to getting good at solving 2x2, two two, which kind of makes it weird that I even made the method in the first place since I'm so bad at 2x2. Two two. My intention always was that the 2x2 two two stage would be the easiest to improve at, so I would save it to learn once I finished making the rest of the method. But I never got around to finishing the method, so I never got around to getting good at 2x2, two two, so that's just where I'm at. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them down in the comments below. And be sure to check the other videos for the specific steps if you are looking for more information or the algs that I used. The descriptions of those, of those videos will include the complete alg lists that I used when I was solving with this method. If you have made it this far, I'm sure you are an avid cuber. And while I would appreciate you subscribing to this channel, just note that I don't really intend on making any further cubing related videos, so bear that in mind before you decide to subscribe. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.